When you're new to programming, palindrome is a concept that you will hear about very often. So what is a palindrome basically? A palindrome simply could be a string or it could be some numbers that read the same way if you read it from the forward direction or if you read it from the backward direction. Now this palindrome could be in form of an array, it could be in form of a string, it could be just simple digits or it could even be in form of a linked list. So how do you determine if a linked list is palindrome or not? In this problem, we are going to explore exactly that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will first try to approach this problem using a brute force method and see why that is not an efficient solution. Going forward, then we will try to optimize this solution and we will try to solve for efficiency. After that, we are also going to do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a linked list and you have to determine if it is a palindrome or not. Correct? Pretty straightforward. So what's a palindrome? A palindrome is simply a sequence of integers, characters, anything that will read the same if you try to read it from the front to the back or from the back to the front, right? So let us look at our first sample test case. If you try to read this linked list from the head, then what do you get? You get a one, two, two, and then a one again, right? And similarly, if you try to read this list from the backwards direction, what do you get this time? This time also, you will get a one, two, two, and then a one, right? So you can see that both of these sequences are same. And hence, this linked list is a palindrome. So in this case, you need to return true as your answer, right? Now let us look at our second test case. In a second test case, if you read this linked list from the head to the end, then what do you get? You get a seven and a eight, right? But if you read it from the tail to the head, what list do you get? You get eight and then a seven, right? Now these both are not the same. And hence, in this test case, you are gonna return false as your answer. This was pretty straightforward and if this clarifies anything for you, feel free to try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so I have the sample link list in front of me and you want to determine if this is a palindrome or not. So what is the technique to determine if a string or a list or an array, if it is a palindrome, what can you do? You will start from the front direction and you will also start from the reverse direction, right? And if you're finding both of these elements as same, then you keep proceeding ahead. So you compare two and two, that's cool. You compare three and three, that is cool. At any point, if one of the elements is not same, then it will not be a palindrome, right? So that's a general idea how a problem on palindrome would look like. So had it been an array, you could have started a pointer from the beginning and a pointer from the end, right? And then you could do it. But this is a linked list you can only travel in the next direction using all of these pointers, right? And also, you only have the reference to the head pointer, right? You do not know where this is, you do not know where this is. The only way you can reach these nodes is if you keep on doing a next and traverse through the entire list, right? So you may ask how to approach this problem. One method or idea that can come to your mind is that, okay, a palindrome should be symmetric around the middle point, correct? So first of all, what I can do is I can try to traverse through my entire list and find whatever is the middle point of my list. In this list, this point will be your middle point, right? And if a list is symmetric about this middle point, then it will be a palindrome, correct? So what I'm going to do is I will start traversing through my list. And if my list has a size of n, then I know that the middle will be at n by two, correct? So after finding out the total length, what I'm going to do is I will start another pointer and I will move it at the middle of the linked list. So this new pointer that I created, it will move at the middle of the linked list. Correct. Now let it just stay over there and keep on analyzing your problem. If you look at your linked list, what do you see over here? That if it has to be a palindrome, then the first number you encounter after the middle point is the last number in your actual list. Correct. So that gives you an idea that, okay, the last number should be the first one that I'm comparing. And this tells you that, okay, 
a stack data structure will be really helpful in this case. So what I'm going to do is I will take a stack data structure, right? And now I will start iterating through the beginning of my list. As I start iterating, I see the first element and that is two, right? What I will do is I will put two in my stack and then I'm going to move my pointer ahead, right? The next number I get is three. I will again put three in my stack and I'm going to move my pointer one step ahead more. So I'm going to put down seven in my stack, right? Now try to move ahead again. As soon as you move ahead, you will see that, okay, now you have reached the middle point of the linked list, right? And that is where you stop. You know that you have covered half of your linked list. What are the next steps now? For the next steps, what you're going to do is you will keep on iterating through this list, but also at the same time, you will compare whatever element you have over here and whatever element is at the top of the stack. If both of them are same, in this case, both of these elements are same, right? You have a seven and you have a seven. So what you will do is you will pop an element from the stack and you are going to move your pointer one step ahead again. So now you're getting the idea, right? Now three and three match. So that means again, this is a valid condition. So once again, what I will do is I will pop my stack and I'm going to move my pointer to the next place. So moving on like this, you will reach the end point of the linked list and you will reach the end of the stack. And both of them are empty now. All the values are equal. So voila, your linked list was a palindrome in fact. And you can simply say true as your answer, right? At any point while traversing, if you see that the value at the top of the stack and the element that you're referring to, if they're not equal, that means that it is not a palindrome and you can stop right over there and simply return false as your answer. Now, this is a wonderful approach and it will give you a correct answer every time. But there is just one tiny problem with this method. The only problem is that to construct this solution, you are going to use a order of n extra space and you're already traversing in order of n time, right? So you're taking up some amount of space while maintaining the stack. And definitely your interviewer will ask you, hey, can you optimize this solution in terms of space? So yes, we can do that. Let us see how we can go about doing that. If you remember a particular step from our previous method, what did we do? We had to determine somehow that, okay, what is the middle point of a linked list, right? Because a palindrome is somewhat symmetric around the middle point, right? So let us take our list again and this will be my middle point, right? In the last approach, what did we do? We traveled through from starting all the way to the middle point and stored all of our elements in our stack, right? Why did we take the help of a stack? We took the help of a stack because we had to now compare all the elements in a reverse direction, right? That means we were going in the opposite direction. That should give you one more hint. And that is, what if you could reverse a certain part of the linked list? So if you're new to reversing linked lists, I would highly recommend you to check out that video first. You can find the link in the description below. So now what you got to do is you have to be a little clever. What shall we do is we will take the second part of this linked list and detach it from the original list, right? And to maintain a list, I'm going to mark a null over here so that this list is complete in itself, right? Now, once we have our second part of the linked list, what you can do is you can simply reverse it. So when I will reverse this, just watch what happens. Your reversed list will start to look something like this, correct? Now all you have to do is you can start one pointer from your original list and you can start another pointer from your reversed list. And you can start comparing each of these elements one by one. If they are same, just move ahead in both of the lists. At any point, if you see that, okay, this element and this element are not equal, that means your list was not a palindrome and hence you need to stop right over there. If you're able to reach a null, that means your linked list actually was a palindrome. So you can see how this is making things easier, right? The time is now just order of n because you're traversing the list once and you're not taking any extra space. You're just reusing your linked list. And this is what makes the linked list data structure very, very special. Now there should be one more question in your mind. In this particular scenario, you had a total of six nodes, right? So you were able to just divide by two and you got a three, right? And hence you were able to simply break it off at a one point, correct? What happens in a case when your linked list has a odd number of elements? 
For example, in this particular test case, I have five nodes. What do I do then? Well, in that scenario, instead of choosing a middle point, what you have to do is you have to choose this entire middle node as your middle point. And then while selecting your lifts, you will form two lifts. One of the lifts will be from head up to this middle node and the other lift will be from the next of this middle node all the way to the null. And then once again, you're going to do the same thing. You will take up the second lift, detach it. And then what you're going to do is you will simply reverse it. And now once again, you can keep on applying your same principle. Just keep moving ahead. And if it is same, it's a palindrome. If it is not same at any point, you just break over there and say that it is not a palindrome. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of this actually works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample link list whose head is passed in as an input parameter to the function is palindrome. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we will try to find the middle of the linked list, right? And we do that using the hare and tortoise algorithm, where you take two pointers. One of them will be a fast pointer and one of them will be a slow pointer, right? So the slow pointer will move one step at a time and the fast pointer will move two steps at a time. So you can see that slow pointer moves one step and the fast pointer moves two steps. Now your condition will terminate as the fast pointer has reached null. And that means you have found out the middle of a linked list. So you can see that slow is at the middle point, right? So now that you have determined the middle point of a linked list, what do you have to do? You have to reverse the second part, right? And to do that, what I'm going to do is I will take this slow pointer and I will pass it in as a head to the function reverse list. Now this reverse list function is exactly the same as we did for reversing a singly linked list, right? So be sure to check out its code. When this method returns, what I will have is I will have this second part completely reversed. And next, what I have to do is I assign my fast pointer back to the head value. So now these two pointers are pointing at the heads of two new linked lists, correct? The rest part is very, very simple, right? You just need to start a while loop and you have to compare all the elements one by one. If they are equal, keep on proceeding ahead. As soon as you find that one of the element is not equal, what are you going to do is you will return a false. If this loop passes through, you've just fall through and you will return a true and that will tell that, okay, this linked list was a palindrome in fact. As discussed before, the time complexity of this solution is order of n because you have to iterate through the entire list and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because we are not taking any extra space to arrive at our solution, right? But there is one caveat. In this approach, we are modifying the actual structure of a linked list, right? We are reversing it. If your interviewer asks you that you cannot alter the original linked list, then you have to use the stack data structure approach and then your time complexity and space complexity both will be order of n. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems involving palindromes, I know that it is a very basic concept. You just have to determine, okay, if a certain string or a number reads the same from the front and the back, right? But do not just skip these problems because when you try to solve them, you will understand a lot more new concepts and it will also teach you how you can reuse some of the things that you have already done before. For example, in this problem, we reuse the concept of reversing a linked list, right? So generally in interviews, let us say your interviewer asks you the first question is, okay, reverse a linked list. Then the subsequent question would be, okay, Determine if a linked list is palindrome or not. In those scenarios, your interviewer is expecting you that you reuse your solutions because that is the attribute of a good programmer, right? So while going through this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other problems where you are reusing and recycling some old concepts? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.